I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking to the team from Netflix's Archive 81. We are joined by showrunner Rebecca Sonnenschein, as well as cast members Mamadou Ache, Dina Shahabi, and Matt Migori. And Rebecca, I wanted to start with a question for you because I really love the way that, you know, this is a show that has genre elements of storytelling and builds a lot of suspense and tension, but everything feels so focused amongst character and connections between characters. And so I was interested in how you really worked to build that that suspense and that tension, but by focusing it on the dynamics between the characters to do so. I think every, you know, every story really needs um, sort of a personal quest um, for the characters so that the that the audience has like a, an emotional reason to go along for the ride. So I think what we started with, the writers and I started with, was just um, what what are these what do these characters want and long for? What's kind of the hole that they're trying to to fill for their for their character? And so that's kind of where we start from. We start from a place where these characters want something that's very dear to them, um, and then we sort of <laughs> complicate it as they sort of go down this rabbit hole. Um, you want something that compels them to keep going, basically. So it has to be very important to them, it has to be very close to their heart. Uh, so that's sort of where we, we started with, and that's where all good genre stuff starts with, I think. Yeah, I completely agree. And and Mamadou, you know, kind of going off the back of what Rebecca was just saying about the driving factors for characters, um, you know, your character develops this this r real kind of relationship with Melody as a character through all the footage that he's watching, but there's so much driving force from his backstory. And Rebecca's scripts really give so much rich detail in terms of his childhood, his relationship with his father and how that forges so many of the choices he makes, as well as addressing some of the mental health struggles that he's had recently. And so given that there was so much much rich language in the scripts that gave you so much detail and backstory. How did that help you in terms of character development and the way that you saw him as a character? Um, well, yeah, the blueprint was there completely. Um, you know, there's the, and, and it all for me starts with the circumstance. Um, you know, who, what happened in his childhood, you know, kind of defines um, who he's become. Um, and, you know, he's an archivist. And he's, he's a guy who restores things for people who've lost them. Um, and, you know, a lot of that has to do with the past. Um, so I, I thought that said, that said uh, in, in such a simple, like his, his job simply says so much about him as a person and the kind of romantic I believe he is. Um, that, you know, these, those kinds of details and the way he goes about things, um, you know, just, and, and I also have to give it to the, um, the you know, set department, the props, everything that, that kind of informs um, who this man is, that, that, that blueprint is all right there. And, um, I have to say my, my favorite scenes were often the ones with, with Melody because they were so, um, so simple, but so full of, uh, of circumstance and, and detail that I, I just, I, I could have done those forever. And Dina, similarly, there's so much drive for your character in terms of um, her relationship with her birth mother and never knowing who she was and, and having a sense that she might be able to find her. And that really being the driving factor that even once she realizes that there's a lot of potential dangers in the situation that she's in, that that's what keeps her going and keeps her moving forward. Um, but also it speaks so much to the complexity inside of her as a character in terms of questioning her identity and feeling like there's a piece of her that she's never quite figured out. And so it's interesting interested in, in how that shaped a lot of aspects, um, you know, especially internally for her as a character for you. Oh yeah, that is everything. And I think like Rebecca said so perfectly, her, that's the driving force. That's what's keeping her going, this desire to know who she is, to know who her mother is. And her only lead that she's ever had her entire life is this building. So no matter what's happening and no matter how scary it's getting, her desire is so much greater than her fear. Um, and I love that both her and Dan had come from a very similar place of loss and longing. Um, and I find that they're kind of on these parallel tracks throughout the show. Mm -hmm. 
And Matt, I love the number of details that are peppered in with your character because we're mostly seeing him in relationship to his friendship with Dan. And sometimes we're getting elements which tell us about who he is at his core. And sometimes there's, you know, comedic aspects like when he references stage combat that he trained in for several years, suddenly paying off for him. Um, and so what was your process of really going through the scripts and just finding all those little, you know, sometimes just like brief throwaway lines and real one liners that Rebecca had peppered in throughout all of the scripts and how how that formed the way that you expressed him as a character in those scenes where he's connecting with Dan. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it's fun, by the way, this is the first time I assume the, all of us are speaking in press about the show. So it's yeah. fun to open my mouth and hope words come out. Um, but <laughs> I, um, yeah, you know, I think every, every project is, is a different, definitely a different process. I'll say the thing that always sort of remains for me is I'm making the words make sense through the filter of, of my mind. Um, and, and that filter adapts uh, based on what, what the character has been, um, how the character has been created. And because Rebecca did such a great job um, and the writers of creating something so specific, um, it allowed me to, uh, to change and shape that um, as I went. And I actually feel like my audition ended up being kind of different than it ended up being in the day. And that's partly because you just have to be open. Um, I think spontaneity is, you know, probably one of the most important things in terms of acting. Um, and you have to be open to the other character and what they're giving you, the other actor, uh, the circumstances and just how things change beyond what you might've um, imagined. Um, and uh, yeah, I always love uh, trying to throw a little humor in there um, and uh, you know, throw a little spice on, on what Rebecca's giving me. <laughs> And Rebecca, you know, Mama Dew was mentioning before the, the scenes between Dan and Melody. And I love visually the way that those scenes are captured as well, even down to the fact that there's little flecks of light that you can see around the two of them. So it kind of tells us that it's taking us out of the linear structure of a lot of the rest of the storytelling in those moments. And so how did you determine what you wanted the approach to be for those scenes, both tonally and both visually with a lot of those details? Well, I think in terms of, you know, the actual sort of scenes themselves and the shooting of them, wanted to make them as intimate as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that was very important to sort of like um, bring it onto a very, because what we were trying to do is draw this connection between these two characters um, that was not, you know, somebody looking at a videotape. So. I think that the most important thing was to have sort of these intimate spaces um, where they, you know, Dan is like, he's trying to figure out, is this real? But he, it feels, I feel like it feels real. So, so those conversations need to be very grounded and feel real to the characters. Um, but when we visually represent them, um, I didn't want to do something crazy in camera, you know, so we did that in, we, we, we did that in posts, right? So we wanted to create this space that gave it this heightened, like sort of uh, feeling without having the scene itself feel heightened. You know, you want those, those connections to be real and grounded and um, these characters are genuinely connecting with each other. Um, but, you know, there's something supernatural going on here. So we worked really hard on this. <laughs> Um, we call them particulates, and um, <laughs> I think I hand chose all of them. <laughs> you hand chose all the little particles? I I was really, I'm very detail oriented, so the effects would send me, and I'm like, oh, make that one bigger, and that one more out of focus, and that one should be slower. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's I amazing. Love that. So I that it wouldn't watch. distract, you know, like sometimes like something would be like zooming past your face, and it would be like distracting. You don't want to distract from the moment, you want it like in the back of your mind mm -hmm. like so you know took a while <laughs> want to go back and, and look at all the individual flex yeah now. take a look <laughs> I, I i really made sure that all of them were exactly like moving at the right spot and <laughs> And Dina and Mamadou, I wanted to talk to the two of you about shooting those scenes as well, because, you know, there is that real intimacy and that connection and kind of with what both of you were saying before about your characters backgrounds and the fact that they have that connectivity and, and, and share a similar loss within their relationships with their parents. Um, I was interested in, in how you approached it, because there's also that question over reality or kind of like what reality do, do these conversations take place in, neither of them necessarily being certain at the beginning if, if this is a 
real thing and a real person that they're talking to as well. And so how did you set about finding the very specific intimacy, but also the tone of those scenes? I, um, you know, like Mama, those were my favorite scenes to shoot. They felt suspended in their own, like, you know, they are in the show suspended in their, in their own reality, but also just the experience of shooting them with Mamadou felt really special. Um, and like no one else was on set with us. It felt really private and intimate. Everything Rebecca was saying, that was the experience of doing it. Um, and finding the tone, I remember us having a conversation about how shouldn't feel dreamlike. We shouldn't play it as if it was a dream. We should play it as if we're really taking each other in and it, it's as real as any conversation, but that it's almost tipped a little, for him more than for me, for me that it's a normal day, you know, meeting a new person and feeling a special connection to them. Um, and I think, I don't want to speak for Mamadou, but I think for Dan's perspective is he's been seeing me on screen already. So there's a reference of this is the girl from the from the tapes. But for me, I don't have that reference with him. He's just this new person in my orbit. Um, and then when I start realizing that he's coming into my dreams, it's it's interesting until the moment in the show where it's the conversations are repeated to me by Beatrice and the seance. And that's when I realize that there's something happening. He's significant, that something's happening that's significant and that's where it all changes. But until that moment, it's innocent on my end, I think. Yeah, um, you know, there's, there's a period of time where I'm having these conversations with this woman who I know has long, like, long since passed. And I'm like, have I lost my mind or not? I mean, everything, like I said, it's all in the blueprint of the script and the circumstances. So the, the experience of shooting those scenes, it, it was just a matter of like, you know, pardon the stock phrase, but like just talking and listening and, um, and the rest exactly. took care of itself, you know, just coming in with the circumstances of, okay, I'm, I'm restoring this, I've been observing this person and wait, she's in front of me. What do you do now? <laughs> you know, I guess I'll just have a conversation. <laughs> I got a rat to talk to and, and uh, Melody. So, you know, whatever works. But uh, no, in seriousness, it's it's the it's the blueprint that you follow. And it's just really as simple as that for me, kind of a workmanlike quality. But. And Matt, I wanted to talk about the really intrinsic loyalty that your character has, because I think there's such a beautiful friendship that we get to see on screen between the two of them. And even just, you know, the experience of two men saying that they love each other and, and expressing their feelings, I thought was really beautiful. And your character reaches a point where he's he's willing to risk everything. But also from the very beginning, he never even questions his friend. You know, he's hearing these things that on paper sound, you know, completely ridiculous. And yet he always takes everything as truth and as fact. And so to get to that point where he's willing to risk everything within himself for his friend how did you work to always make sure that every scene really expressed that connectivity expressed that emotion and love and express that sense of extreme loyalty that he has within this friendship yeah um i appreciate that question um yeah i, I think for me well, first of all just you know get an act uh, opposite mamadou who i think is a wonderful actor oh um, thanks man <laughs> likewise buddy Thank likewise you. second time <laughs> yes, second time too. Second time. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. Uncorked is the reference. Um, yeah. um, but uh, yeah, you know, for me, it was it's really just about, again, uh, you know, I hope this doesn't sound too material, but just being present, being there and like sort of uh, investing in this person across from me, you know, and, and their well-being um, and, mm -hmm. and trying to determine that, right? Because uh, as much as I think Dan is, um, uh, you know, I, I think that as much as as close as they are, I think from Mark's perspective, Dan still sometimes holds some things close to his vest. So, and there's a balance for, for Mark of like trying to figure out how much to ask and how much to push without like kind of pushing over the edge. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, you know, uh, stories that are about relationship are the most interesting thing. Right. And it was so rich here. Um, and, and for me, it was just about um, that investment uh, that allows it to be interesting. That's what allows you to care about the characters and what happens to the characters. 
And Rebecca and Mamadou, you know, there's so many scenes throughout the show that are really these moments where we're watching Dan, watching footage, and yet the way in which the story is told, we just completely emotionally and connection-wise feel like we're inside that room and inside that space in terms of the way that you've built that intimacy. But I also think, you know, for your performance, Mamadou, that's a real testament to, to your performance throughout the series and the fact that you managed to find different layers, different responses, different emotional connectivities, and you're playing all these scenes by yourself as well in those moments and yet you're finding all these different textures and so for the two of you i was interested in in how you approach these scenes where you have one actor sitting in front of a screen and yet they're so engaging at every single moment throughout the entire show is it me or you rebecca <laughs> i mean i think it's you because okay. <laughs> i don't know how you do it <laughs> oh well um you know there were there were some scenes there were some scenes that we did have up on the monitor a couple of them that that uh, I the one I remember in particular was um the one where Ariana Ariana Neal young actor lovely young actor um is uh you know just she's just uh, on the couch talking and um, I found it so moving and I I was like man Ariana just helped me do my job <laughs> so much better um uh but there there were many other scenes that you know there weren't and. The thing, I, I found a kind of freedom in that as well because the imagination is boundless. So, you know, I, I again, the blueprint was very clear. I understood the requirements of the scene and what needed to happen. The rest was just, you know, filling it. And I could just use my imagination, just, you know, imagine and just have a full story until, uh, unfold. However, you know, I, uh, again, the blueprint was there, but I could embellish it with the details that helped me get there. Um, so I kind of enjoyed it, actually. You know, <laughs> I, I had a good time. It was it was pretty amazing. We we wanted to have all the footage for Mamadou to look at, but um, even in, nor in normal times, it would be hard, and in COVID times, it was impossible. To, we just had to be more flexible than that with our schedules. So, um, my 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 plan was like, oh, we'll have it all for him to act against, but <laughs> it didn't happen. So I'm forever grateful that. Um, you know, Mama Do was able to really, because it, it, you know, it, it's not easy to do. It's not easy at all. So it, he was really re able to reach down and just like, there's so much on his place on his face. And, and you really feel like Dan is interacting with the footage. That's the thing that we really tried to capture that it was like, it's not just somebody looking at something, you know, you're, it feels like, there, there's a connection happening. Absolutely. And, and Dina, you know, you're tasked with within your performance um, with really intricate blocking and choreography, it looks like in terms of not just where your character is moving, but where am I holding the camera? Where am I placing the camera? You know, what, how am I looking at a character? How am I engaging with them? Because it has to match what we're then seeing on the other side of the camera in the footage that we see Dan watching. And so what was that like in terms of really figuring out a lot of the specific movement and specific choreography of scenes with all of that in mind and capturing that, that archival footage? that we're watching throughout the show? I I just made it um, made a point of asking for my own camera when I got to Pittsburgh so that I could practice with it before I got to set so that it felt like, you know, how we use our iPhones, that same level of comfort and dexterity. Um, and so I didn't feel like an actor holding a camera, but actually felt like um, natural. Um, and in terms of blocking, I guess when you're an actor, you, you learn you learn those things over time. And so I think I never really thought about that stuff too much. It was kind of um, second nature. Um, and because I was actually shooting things, I was very aware of where I was putting camera and making sure I was getting, you know, the footage that I needed as Melody and also as Dina, because they all ultimately ended up using a lot of the footage that I shot, which is really cool. Um, and so because I was really shooting, I had to be very specific about um, matching everything. Um, and so it was as the character I had to do that. So it all kind of flowed really naturally. And I found it quite fun. I really liked um, having that camera. I got very attached to her by the end. <laughs> Tina was really good camera. She's really good at the at shooting. Um, Cause we did, we, that's, that footage is really the footage that she shot. So it's not like we reshot it. It's like, that's that's what we used. And um, 
I was very worried going into it because I thought, <laughs> oh, maybe no, not not yeah. about you in particular, but no, like, it was I was kind nervous. Of a concept, right? Okay. You were nervous too. Yeah. But yeah. right away, <laughs> like we started seeing it, and like, oh, she's a natural, like she's a natural, like a capturing stuff. So then it just really um it feels very authentic because it is. She's really shooting that stuff. Um and it looks awesome. She's That's really good great. at it. <laughs> Thanks. I'm That's glad. so crazy. It could have gone one of our of yeah. both. It could have been really bad. And then, you know, having a That's different so conversation of how we tried to fix it. So I'm really... That's such a fantastic detail. Um, and I really, really love this series. Was able to binge watch the entire thing in one day. May have had some interesting dreams following. Yeah. But it's so Were fantastic. Okay? And <laughs> I'm it still here. Your dreams. It really does. It really it does. gets into your dreams. Yeah. It completely gets into your mind, it, but in the best way. So thank you so much for sharing all of these details in, in making it. It's really fantastic work. And congratulations on everything. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Nice to meet you.